Visit with the mayors on Wednesday, and John Nichols here this morning from the City of College Station. How are you today? Excuse me, I guess I was fine. It sounds <laughs> like I'm not, but I am fine. I'm feeling great. Welcome back, Chelsea. I listened to your whale stories a little bit ago. Sounds <laughs> sound like a lot of fun when you weren't drinking port or wine. Uh, yeah, and yeah, now she's got a, a soccer cup that she's uh, a big fan of. So, um, got our first football game coming up in a couple of weeks. Um it's always exciting when that happens, but uh, the the city changes. We have a lot of strangers in. That makes it uh, kind of difficult. I'd, I'd like to talk, first of all, about the the uh, facility you've got, the, just the old fire station right across from uh, the campus, doing some new and different things over there this year. That's right. That 1207 uh, is a, a hot spot now. You talk about big changes in the football game. I think the biggest change happened the last week or so because we've got uh, lots of folks back in town. Some of them are new. And they'll be here the whole next nine months. So uh, football people come and go in two days. Those folks, uh, those students stay. They, uh, the uh, off-campus housing group uh, that we work closely with at A&M had a big carnival over there Sunday night. I'm told, our staff said there was about 1,200 people. Mm-hmm. We thought there'd only be about two or 300, maybe 500. And the A&M people say, no, there was 2,000 there. <laughs> and they were swarming City Hall uh, grounds. Uh, great. And they had a great, uh, uh, fun even, evening, and we're happy that the, uh, that the university and the off-campus housing folks are willing and interested in using our facilities, and we're happy to host them. It, it's a great way for the students to get introduced to the city uh, off the campus, and uh, so 1207 is an ideal spot for that. So we had a great time uh, hosting them. And then, of course, we've got uh, what we're calling this year hometown tailgates, and we moved it to the... Uh, time before the games rather than a Friday night. So uh, it'll be the typical three, three and a half hour uh, prior to the game. So we'll have four of those this year at 12.07. And not only will we be providing the fun and the snacks and and that sort of thing, but we will be providing free shuttle from there for those that show up and uh, get a wrist tag from the uh, staff. And then they'll be allowed on and off the shuttle to uh, head to the campus. You know, even though we've been doing this for a long time and the numbers have gotten bigger, any other infrastructure situations that impact the city on this first week when the students get back? Well, the, the weekend the students get back, interestingly, well, here's, here's one. I got an email from a young man uh, questioning why we are, are so concerned about minors in possession, MIPs. And uh, I'm not saying that that gentleman had had an incident, but he noticed that the stat that the police and the bicycle entertainment police group in Northgate were very active this weekend, and and so I'm going to communicate back to him that there is a reason for that. So uh, you do see a, a ramp up of uh, of uh, trying to uh, help the students adjust, the new ones particularly to getting around town. Certainly, traffic. Everybody notices the congestion, and of course, still a holdover from public schools opening and, and uh, ILT and the others. So we still got some traffic congestion issues. People work that out in a couple of weeks. Um, Did so, that guy think, what, that they got a grace period maybe in Texas? You know, the first weekend <clears throat> in college, you made a bad decision. Uh, I, I guess, I, I, it was a very pol- polite okay. uh, request, uh, in, inquiry, really, about why are you so concerned about MIPs? Okay. Well, that's... So uh, it's a fair, uh, fair question from somebody who maybe just got one. But no, it's against the law. It's uh, it you got to address those things right up front. And uh, our our entertainment police find lots of uh, uh, violations in Northgate area, and uh, that's something that you try to educate. And we do use it education because they go through the uh, community service course yeah. that the judge puts together. Then uh, they're uh, they're able to get that uh, off their record. So we don't have on street parking right now. That might be something council will take up in September. Not, yeah, not this year. The staff's working on a lot of other things, and uh, the time it would take to get uh, reorganized. There, there are certain things we've learned from it, which is really what that experiment was all about. Uh, I will not say that we won't be doing it in the future, but in this season, I think we put it off the table till we address some of those uh, concerns, and I think there's some relatively easy fixes to the major concerns, but the staff time to get that done is just uh, not not available at this time. Are we done with public input on that? Is this pretty much something that, that council is either going to make a decision well, on? It, we, we we're never done with public input <laughs> because you always got a council meeting where you have your visitors and yeah. folks can come speak to us. 
uh, but I, it has not been, uh, since we are pushing the agenda this year, we haven't had any further uh, input, but um, I think we heard uh, the concerns of the neighborhood, uh, and uh, also we've gotten some support for it because it is a source of additional funding that can be used for lots of other city needs. It's funny, we have uh, prep services to get us um, information for the show, and they were talking about College Station, Texas, and drones, and, and these the that Amazon wants to increase their numbers and that sort of situation. And the same thing, uh, Walmart is pulling back on their drones from other states and just bringing it down to Texas right now. So where are you with the drone situation, and what's your sense of where that'll be? Yeah, since the FAA uh, opened up the uh, con- um, comment period, and I, on behalf of the city, wrote a letter to uh, to them commenting on our support for Amazon, our, our, our pleasure in actually having them locate here, but also reflecting the concerns of the citizens that are mostly impacted in neighborhoods with noise. So uh, that got picked up. I've been doing interviews and in hit national news last weekend, and a lot of the technical trade magazines are writing about it. Uh, we are uh, working with Amazon to identify another location in uh, College Station that will not impact uh, uh, a neighborhood uh, as much and will be in, in more of an industrial area uh, or could be uh, considered to be such. Uh, they are working, of course, on their new drone, which is uh, supposedly quieter and uh, more efficient, lighter weight, flies more distance. I mean, it's a proven in their technology, which they're really excited about, and we are too, we want to see that here. We'd love to see it uh, tested here and, and put in place here to see how it works. Uh, they've committed to uh, working with us to try to find another location in College Station. We'll see how that works out. Of course, one of, one of Amazon's options <clears throat> is to pull up stakes and move out of College Station. Any in- Well, they could at some point. Frankly, this is a pilot study. We, <clears throat> we understood it to be that. And uh, when you test the... Uh, the uh, models. I understand they're opening an operation near Phoenix, somewhere in one of those western suburbs. They're opening a couple in Europe. They may decide those are bigger markets where they can test the next stage and uh, do it from one of their own uh, uh, Amazon warehouses properties, which they don't have here Mm -hmm. and can't do here. So uh, I I certainly hope that doesn't happen, but uh, it's a private enterprise. Companies come and go. This was uh, understood to be a pilot study. Finally, uh, the agenda got a pretty full agenda. What's uh, what uh, pokes out at you? Well, we got who's and ruse. Okay, and both of them <laughs> in there. Both of them deal with housing and housing issues. Uh, both of them have uh, gone through uh, staff and PNZ, and I think those will be presented uh, a couple of different areas. I'm not going to get into details on that, but uh, people understand it. I think the biggest thing we're dealing with. Uh, is that uh, we got a workshop item on the recreation center study, which is going to be a, you know, a, a very significant initiative uh, when we get to the point where we've got guidance from uh, the study to decide what we should do, what the scale should be, and so forth uh, on that rec center idea. The other one that's really a hot item, if you're in the soccer business, is the feral hog damage out at uh, Veterans Park. 20, 25 years we've been running soccer fields out there. We've never had this kind of damage and uh, this, the conditions this year apparently uh, triggered that. Uh, so we got about $148,000 uh, repair bill on our agenda, emergency repair bill, because those fields got to be, are, are being re- redone this year, this week. As a matter of fact, today and yesterday and the Monday probably. And those deals are going to be uh, definitely, uh, uh, those fields will be redone. Uh, there's four or five of them involved because we got tournaments coming up and we got to have it done. Yeah, you, like you say, 25 years in it, but as you build new houses in places where they weren't before, I guess the hogs move around as well. That's true, too. and we're working with Texas Wildlife and uh, Parks folks to try to get a um, some kind of a resolution. Uh, it may include some fencing, which will be pretty expensive. Certainly right now they're trapping, and they're trying to discourage the uh, the pack right. from coming back, and they did it just on, over one night, I guess, and uh, hopefully we scared them away, and they'll stay away for the rest of the year. Uh, but the current mitigation is uh, pretty expensive. And also you'll notice that we are irrigating out there in the daytime. And I want people to understand that that is recycled water right. because we do use recycled water there. And it's a big investment of the city's funds, the taxpayer funds. We've got to maintain those fields because it generates a lot of revenue for the city. And 
So the, 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 we are using recycled water, so I hope people don't get too concerned about that. Yep, been, been from day one, right? I mean, yeah, the gray that's, water exa- that's exactly right. All yeah. Right. Anything yeah. else this morning? No, I think that uh, covers the items uh, uh, that I wanted to uh, include on the, on the, on the discussion. But, uh, you know, come to city council meeting, we got a long one this week. Um, and also the budget. Keep in mind, we're adopting the tax rate and the budget this week. Uh, this week, the tax rate will stay the same at 51.3086 cents uh, per $100 uh, of um, valuation. But same as last year, it'll raise about $3 million more. And so, you know, the overall uh, operating budget goes up about 2.9% for the city. So it, we're staying well within the inflationary effects and the growth effects this year. But next year is another challenge with the fire station coming online. New expenses, exactly. John Nichols, the Mayor College Station. Thanks for the time this morning. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Appreciate it.